We have calculated the conditional probability of a stock going up X percent given that the stock went up Z percent last week. However, what if we want to know what the expected return will be given the previous stock moves? This is conditional expectation or the expected mean value of a stock's return given some known condition. This probability theory can help models understand how assets behave under specific scenarios. In Python, let's import the needed libraries and get historic price data for a stock using Yahoo Finance. Let's do Amazon stock. Next, I'm going to borrow the code that we created in my previous conditional probability video. If you want a walkthrough of this code, check out the video in the top right and in the description. Essentially, this script is calculating the stock's starting price and ending price and deriving the price change for the week. When I print the data frame, we can see the start date, end date, stock price at the start of the week, at the end of the week, the weekly price change and the percent change. Since our conditional expected value will be based on the previous week's price change, we need to calculate the previous percent change. We can achieve this by using the shift feature on the percent change column. Now we have the data we need to calculate the conditional expectation or average percent change given the previous week's price action. First, we need to initiate a dictionary to store the conditional expected change. Next, let's say we want to find the expected percent change in Amazon stock price given that Amazon went down 5% last week. We can set the condition that the previous week change must be less than negative five. Then gather all percent change values of this condition being true and call the mean function against it. We can store this new value in our dictionary. But what if we want to know the conditional expectation between negative five and negative 4% or what the average price action would be if Amazon last week went up 2% to 3%. It would be repetitive to do what we did above, so let's write a for loop instead. We can find the conditional expected return for each price action bucket by dynamically creating new price change buckets for each value of i. Since 5% is the final value, we will say the conditional is true if the previous week change is greater than or equal to 5.
we can print the expected price dictionary and see this week's average percent change respective to the previous week's percent change. Amazon went down 9% because of negative market sentiment after tariff announcements. According to our conditional expectations model, on average, we see Amazon move 0.6% next week, given that the stock went down more than 5% last week. So 50% probability that Amazon will go up more than 0.6% this coming week, and 50% probability that Amazon's price action will be below 0.6%. Let's get more insight by calculating volatility or the standard deviation. We can add a standard deviation dictionary and calculate the percent change standard deviation like we did for the mean. Standard deviation for Amazon stock when Amazon went down more than 5% last week is 9.2%. This tells us that Amazon stock has become more volatile after the previous week experienced great price action. Now let's bring this data into an option trading strategy. Let's say I have 100 shares of Amazon and I want to sell a covered call. Amazon went down 9% last week. Thanks to our expected conditional value, I know that on average, Amazon goes up 0.6% and Amazon has heightened volatility given that Amazon went down more than 5% last week. I want to sell covered calls to make passive income, but I want to offset my risk knowing that Amazon is experiencing higher volatility right now. Therefore, assuming a normal distribution, I can find out the probability of Amazon going X percent given that Amazon was down more than 5% last week. Like we did in my probability distribution video, we can use the normal function in Python. We can see what the probability of Amazon going up 7% this week is given the historic data. The result is 24%. Let's say I am only willing to sell a covered call if the probability of assignment is less than 25%. Therefore, I would sell a strike price at or above 7% or $182.97. Therefore, on the option chain, I would round up and comfortably sell the 185 strike price call option and collect 168 in premium. We can also consider the other side of the exchange. Let's say I am risk loving and I want to buy a near expiration call option. Amazon went down more than 5% last week, but I know the average return is 0.6% and the volatility is plus or minus 6%. 
As an option holder, I want volatility because this provides me with more chance that the stock goes into the money or passes the strike price. To break even on the 172.5 call, the stock must go up 4.73%. So assuming normal distribution, the probability that Amazon will go up 5% this week is only 31%. Someone who is risk loving may want to trade this contract because of the heightened volatility, but near expiration out of the money call options can be risky. Check out my video about implied volatility to learn more about options trading. We now have a Python script that returns the expected price action of a stock given the performance of last week. This can help financial models understand how assets behave under different circumstances. I hope you enjoyed this coding video and the example option strategies you can implement based on this code. If you enjoy this video, consider hitting subscribe to help out the channel. Of course, Entrendias is not financial advice, but I do hope you enjoyed coding with me today. I will see you all in the next one.